14 of them showed up on Adios Day, forcing officials to split the race into divisions. In the first, driver Joe O'Brien had Nero on the lead as the field entered the home stretch. Nero by a length, and Shirley Poe is coming at him. Nero and Shirley Poe is coming. Nero and Shirley Poe, it's Nero. The first five finishers in that swift 158 and three-fifths mile would come back later that afternoon for the fight. Now it was time for the horses to cool out, for the drivers to ponder new and better strategies, and for the record-breaking crowd to select an ultimate winner. What do you like in the adios? Oh, I have to go with Nero. Definitely Nero. Nero. I would have to say Nero. It's a thing, he's a super horse, and I like to drive it. Nero. I like Water Baron. Water Baron. I think Nero. I want to pick Albert Starr. The Water Baron. Nero. I like Nero, but I'm rooting for Water Baron. Oh, I'll take Nero. Oh, Nero's number one. In the deciding heat of the adios, Bill Horton took Brett's champ to the top, then gave way to the seemingly uncontainable Water Baron. At last, as the field rounded the final turn, O'Brien eased Nero out from along the rail. Baron and Nero! Water Baron and Nero! Water Baron and Nero! Hugging it out! Water Baron and Nero! And Albert Starr coming on! Nero has the lead! Albert Starr closing fast! Shouts of joy in the Nero camp, which included owners Rene Derbez, Jack Masso, and representatives of the Stoner Creek Stud, but there were quiet doubts, too. Nero hadn't looked as sharp as he had in the Cane Pace or Battle of the Brandywine. Never before did O'Brien have to shake the lines so, or resort with such frequency to the whip 